Welcome back everybody. Uh, today I'm going to do a quick video on cleaning up an axe head. I've got a project that I need to start on. I'm just waiting on artwork so that I can complete the project, but I've got everything I need to get started. So let's clean up an axe head. So this video is geared more toward uh, people that are just getting into axe restoration. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different processes give you some ideas uh, that you could try and I know which direction I want to go with this axe head um, because the customer and I have already just dis discussed it um, so it's eventually going to get mechanically stripped on a wire wheel uh, but I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can clean it to achieve different effects if you will so what my plan is for the video is I'm going to clean since it's a double bit I've got four different sections I can work on. I'm going to clean each section with different technique and different product to see what different results are because I know at the end of the day what I'm going to do with this head. I can make it all of it look uniform. Um, I like to start off simple, least aggressive possible. So I'm going to spray this down with some WD-40. And you can use steel wool. Um, Four out steel wool is hard for me to find locally. I have to order it, but I can always find this very fine Scotch Brite in any automotive store around me. So I'm just gonna start scrubbing and rubbing that rust away. You feel the rust on the surface. It's knocking it down. And like I said, I like to do as minimally aggressive as possible. This would be if you were wanting to completely, what, how should I say? If you wanted to completely preserve uh, the look of the ax uh, without scuffing it up too much, this would be the process that I would suggest that you try first. And of course, if you don't like the results, then you can step up in aggressiveness and, and see where that, what that does. Until all that rust is starting to come off. And grab a paper towel. Didn't quite remove all of it. Don't know if you can tell or not. Still left some behind, so you just hit it again. And you just repeat that process until you get the result that you want. I think uh, even though it's hard for me to find uh, four out steel wool locally, I'm going to use some for this video to show you the difference between the Scotch Brite pad and the the four out. It's almost like wet sanding. I try to use as little pressure as needed. You can feel and see when the rust is coming off, uh, but you may have to get a little more aggressive. The nice thing about these ultra fine Scotch Brite pads is if there is paint or a, a patina that you're wanting to preserve, it does a really good job of not removing that and leaving that behind. I don't know if you can tell or not, still a little bit of rust. So if you were wanting to completely remove that, you would step up in aggressiveness or just continue down that process. Because you can see, it looks like uh, it's just a, a faint, maybe they blued this. I don't know. It's a, it's, it doesn't feel like paint, but it's a nice black finish underneath. Let me go ahead and grab the steel wool 
and we'll try that over here. So I've got my steel wool. and go back with some Windex. You could probably use simple green or whatever you want, but uh, I try to like using Windex. It's not as expensive as other cleaners. And I'm feeling about the same thing here, guys, gals. It is just removing the surface rust. I can feel it getting smoother with each pass. Honestly, I don't think it's as aggressive. Yeah, just by the way it feels, it is not as aggressive as the ultra-fine Scotch-Brite pad from the automotive area. The paint section of the automotive area. And I'm actually pressing down pretty hard now. I don't know if y'all can tell or not, but the scotch Bright actually removed a little bit more than the steel wool and still protected the surface. Both have, yeah, the scotch Bright side feels smoother. Like the, the rust that's still there that I haven't removed yet feels smoother. It's knocked down further than the scotch Bright. I'm sorry. The scotch Bright side is knocked down and smoother than the four out steel wool side <clears throat> now on this side I am going to step up in aggressiveness I am going to use where is it this is uh, two 240 grit sandpaper And I'm just lightly going over this because this will knock down a lot of paint or patina that's on there. And if you don't want to do that, then, you know, just continue down the route with the less abrasive, aggressive means. Yeah, you can, I don't know if you can, I can see it. I don't know if you ever see it. I, I'm not putting much pressure at all on this, but it is definitely taking the patina, the bluing, whatever's on here, it's taking it away. It's going down to bare metal. And in my eyes, if you're going to go that route, I think there's a much better way to do it than, than this, a much, much quicker way to do it than this. See, you can tell it left all kinds of scratches that I'm going to have to remove now. And it took that patina off. So if you're wanting to save any paint or patina, my suggestion would be just work at it with either the steel wool or the Scotch-Brite that you can get at any automotive area. It's not the Scotch-Brite that you get in the kitchen section. That's a little bit coarser than this. This is the ultra fine paint and body uh, abrasive pad that you would get from the automotive section. Yeah, see how that just left scratches and now you could, of course, start with a 400 grit. Let's do that. Let's do a 400 grit. 
and I was going to go ahead and move over to WD-40, but for <laughs> scientific reasons, we'll just stick with the Windex and different abrasives to see what results we get. The steel wool and the scotch Rite pad are basically, they're just abrasives. They're less abrasive than the 400 grit. I honestly really like the finish that I get from 400 grit on handles, on axes, on all kinds of stuff. I go through more 400 grit than anything else. That's just my personal experience. You will find what you like. But I always encourage everybody to try different things to find out what it is you like. Even with the 400 grit, a little bit of the patina or bluing has come off. That's okay because I do intend to completely refinish this head, so I'm going to take it down as much as possible. The next two options that I would suggest would be to get a wire wheel of some kind. This one will chuck up in any drill. You don't have to have a bench grinder to use this. This leaves a really nice finish. This is basically where I'm going to uh, on the bench grinder. Or you have these knotted cups. You can put it on an angle grinder. This will remove everything. And it leaves a decent finish. It looks really good afterwards. But sticking with less aggressive first, I'm going to move over to the wire wheel. Taking an old, dirty, oily rag and wiping off everything. For my purposes, the wire wheel achieves the look that I'm going for for this project. As you can tell, it does take off paint and patina. So if that's your goal, then this will work. If you want to strip it completely, go more aggressive. But that is the look from the wire wheel. Cleans it up nicely for a rugged appearance. But I'm not quite done yet. All too often, the whole purpose of cleaning it up is to get the rust off. All too often, people neglect cleaning up the eye. And what I do to clean up the eye is I have... Take this out and show you. I don't know where I got it. It was just from... I don't remember if it was a parts store or the grocery store, but it's a metal bristle brush that I collapsed the handle down on so it would fit in the chuck of my drill. You got to get it right. And I've sprayed a little bit of WD-40 in the eye. And I just clean it out. Nice and clean in there now. Well, there it is. It's a 
quick little video on different ways to clean up the axe head. Again, I went with the wire wheel because of the look that I wanted to achieve. This may be much for some people, and I get that, but from what my customer and I have discussed, this is what we wanted to go with. Now, I'm going to touch on one other thing. Two, a couple other things. You do what you want to do. This is your hot rod. This is your baby. If you want to strip it completely down and do a mirror polish, knock yourself out. Those are awesome for what they are. But if you're just getting into it and you don't know the aesthetic or the look that you're going for, I would highly suggest start off as minimally abrasive as possible and work your way up to achieve the look you're going for. Having said that, if you're flipping axe heads on eBay or any other site, good for you. But the biggest complaint I ever hear from the axe collecting community is when somebody destroys the value of an axe head by cleaning it too much. If you are flipping heads, listen and please listen well. Most axe collectors want to clean their own heads. If it's a nice stamp and it's hard to read, at minimum, take some oil and a rag and clean up the surface. Maybe the Scotch Bright or Triple Ot Steel Wool. Just most collectors want to clean the heads themselves. And then you go in there and you scuff it up and you put it in a vapor rust or you, whatever you do to it and you remove the character and history that that axe head has, you have devalued it in, I'm going to say everybody's mind that I've ever talked to that's in the axe collecting community. But if it's yours, it's your baby, your hot rod, you make it a gasser, you make it a dragger, whatever you want to do. It's your baby, do it. But if you're flipping them, just clean it up or leave it alone. Well, I truly appreciate y'all watching the video. This is going to be a project that I'm working on. Remy decided he wants to help me with it. Isn't that right, buddy? So I'm going to do a multi-stage series on hanging this axe head and preparing it. So stick around. More to come. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Till next time, get out there, save something from being forgotten, and live a big life. You ready to get down, bud? You ready to get down? Oh, you're so freaking cute.